increases. Um, demand for a product and the price of that product. Inverse. That is called our law of supply and demand. Okay, now let's think about that for a second. As demand increases, that means everybody wants it. So what happens? A bunch of stores start supplying it because everybody wants it. Well, if a lot of stores have a good, how do they entice the public to come buy their products? At a lower price. Okay, so if the demand is high, that means everybody's selling it. So you have to lower your price to be able to compete and get people to come in and buy your product in your store. As the demand for something goes down, if hardly anybody ever buys, I don't know, let's say Macs become obsolete and nobody wants a Mac computer anymore. You're not going to be able to find Mac computers at every store on the corner. You're not going to be able to find one at Circuit City and at Walmart and at Target and at Office Depot and off wherever. You know, you'll have a limited supply out there. Which means, what can they do with their prices? Raise them. Because if nobody else is selling them, if you come wanting a Mac, you have to pay that price. Because you can't get it anywhere else, right? Okay. Very good. All right. Now, what we're going to actually be doing with these functions today is we're going to be combining two functions and seeing what the result is. And it's very, very, very simple. We're not graphing. I'm going to ask you what the graph looks like just to refresh your memory and review what we've already learned. But we're not going to have to graph. Here I have two functions. f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 1. And g of x is equal to 4x plus 5. The first function would look like what on a graph? A parabola opening how? Opening up. A parabola opening up, would it's, uh, okay, that's enough. The second function would look like what? Straight line. A straight line with what kind of slope? A positive slope. So the second function represents a direct or an indirect relationship between two things. A direct relationship <coughs> between two things. Okay, that's just for knowledge. Now, this is for like testing. If I ask you to add these two functions together, I am simply saying take what f of x is equal to and add it to what g of x is equal to. Now, we're going to actually put like terms underneath each other, so it goes back to our elementary adding the way we just put everything in columns. So if you're adding 4x plus 5, we'll line up our like terms. Okay, and all we have to do is put it all together. We have x squared here. We have negative 3x plus 4x, which gives us positive 1x. And we have 1 plus 5, which gives us 6. And that's your answer. <coughs> that's it. So that is it. Okay? F, you would, if you wanted to write the whole thing out, Yes, you would say f plus g of x equals that. Okay? But for my purposes, if you just box off that answer, that's good. Oh, so it's and plus? No. This means I have this function and this function. Plus is because this says f plus g. Okay? Now, in this next example, I still have f of x and g of x. These are two completely different relationships. The first one is still a parabola. The second one is still a direct relationship or a straight line with a positive slope. But now I want you to take the g function and subtract from it the f function. So you start with your g function, which is 4x plus 5, and you're going to subtract from it the function f of x. Now, there are three terms in this function. So if you're subtracting, what do you have to do? Put it over. Change all the signs. 
because if you're subtracting x squared, it's going to become minus x squared. And if you're subtracting negative 3, it becomes plus 3x. And if you're subtracting positive 1, it becomes minus 1. And notice I'm lining up the like terms to make it easier to spot what goes together. And so, g minus f of x is equal to that. Now, what if I had flipped it around and instead of g minus f, it was f minus g? Then these signs would have stayed the same, but these signs would have changed because I'm subtracting the g function this time, okay? So you have to be careful when you're dealing with subtraction and make sure which one comes first and which one comes second. All right, now let's talk about multiplication. Same function, same two functions. If I tell you to multiply them together, it means multiply them together. All right? Now, in this one, I'm not going to worry about the order because I want to write it to where it's simpler for me to uh, multiply. And if you put your smaller polynomial first, it makes it easier. Now, why does the order not matter when you're multiplying? Because order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. It does matter when you're subtracting and when you're dividing, but it doesn't matter when you're multiplying. 3 times 2 is 6. You flip that around, 2 times 3 is still 6. Okay? Now, how do you multiply a binomial times a trinomial? What's the special little word? No, it's not foil. Distribute. We have to distribute each term from this binomial to the next trinomial. So first I'm going to distribute 4x, God bless you, to all three terms in the trinomial. So 4x times x squared gives you 4 what? x cubed. 4x times negative 3x gives you? Negative 12x squared, and 4x times 1 is 4x. Now I'm going to take positive 5 and do the same thing, and I'm going to line my like terms up. 5 times x squared is positive 5x squared. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x, and 5 times 1 is positive 5. And add your terms together. You've got 4x cubed minus 7x squared minus 11x plus 5. Yep. Okay? So all we're doing, we've done this already. <coughs> we've done multiplication of polynomials. We've done adding. We've, we've subtracted. We've also divided. Now what it's doing is trying to let you realize that these are actual relationships between things. It's not just numbers and letters that are thrown out there. So when you're saying, how does this apply to real life, you know, the examples I gave you, and plenty more examples. You know, talk about, uh, let's say you're building a bridge, and you need to know, you know, the height of the bridge and the tension of the whatever, I don't know, I don't know how you build bridges. But the higher the bridge is, the more support you need. Wouldn't you think? Okay? What kind of relationship is that? It's a direct relationship. And so there is a relationship that exists, and they're trying to figure out, okay, well, how much support do I need if I go this high? And how much support do I need if I go this high? And, of course, there's a bunch of factors involved. But this is what they're using. All right? Okay, and then finally, we are going to do division. which it's simply setting it up, and then it's a review of stuff we've already done. F is in the numerator, so that means that the function of F goes in your numerator. It's x squared plus 5x minus